So he turns up and he says, I'm a tattoo artist, but I want to become Muslim. Will that be a problem? So the leading question actually is a representative, uh, I guess, scenario of the wider issue, which is someone who's doing something uh, uh, um, which is understood to be impermissible in Islam, as they are still non-Muslim. Um, they are doing it, obviously, not understanding that there is a problem with the action. It could be, you know, serving in a bar, it could be working as a tattoo artist. It could be anything from the impermissible uh, occupations. So there's a wider issue here, first of all, and that's to understand from our from our principles of our da'wah, the issue of priorities and understanding what's more important when it comes to the, the doing of prohibitions or the achieving of obligations. And most important of all, of course, one's aqidah, one's actual creed. So can we or should we allow a impermissible act to threaten the possibility of accepting uh, the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for establishing creed, that's the fundamental question. The first thing I want to say is that if someone does come to you with this scenario, i.e. I, uh, I heard that you need to wear hijab, I don't want to wear hijab, I don't like the idea of hijab, but I really do believe in Islam, whatever, then you must never let, of course, a act, an obligation, for example, to stop a person entering the deen. You'll say, listen, let's focus. You, I, I, if you were in the other episodes, I said that you will never deny the act or belittle the act or say, hey, it's, that's a minor, or you won't say that. But you will say that, let's now talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's now develop our iman and our love for the Messenger of Allah and the love for his commands and for his advice and the, his wives and every single aspect that is a a a uh, an evidence for us, a example for us to follow. That will it will only become important to us, and we will only develop the desire to follow these examples once we have time and our iman gets stronger. And that's something which we all know and happened to us. And of course, we have to afford the opportunity to the new Muslim as well. So we were not going to close these doors because of something that they are saying which is impermissible. They might have some baggage. They may have some psychological issues. They may have some profession, for example. We've already talked about those who are in existing relationships which would be impermissible according to Islamic law. Well, now that they're new Muslim, they're under a, a new set of circumstances. There's the issue of necessity, ad-darura as we call it. And of course, ad-darura, necessity, allows even the impermissible things to become temporarily permissible. So when a person comes to you and says, I'm a tattoo artist, this is my profession, it's the only thing that I know, it's the only thing that I, I can do, and I don't want to enter into a religion that's going to make it, uh, that's not going to allow me to, uh, practice my my profession. Uh, what's going to happen? What's in it for me now when I can become Muslim? So we're not going to fudge the issue. Some, as I said, depending upon their confidence and also the the level of uh, I guess acceptability on this on the on behalf of the the uh, non-Muslim who's about to take shahada, inshallah, depending on how convinced they are, some will be, they're so buzzed about it that they're willing to accept that they'll do a life change, a lifestyle change, a change of occupation and so on and so forth, um, just because they're so hyped. Others are not ready for that. They will need that little bit of time in Islam before they can start making big decisions which require tawakkul and iman. Because, for example, we know that when a person is doing something impermissible, we tell them to leave it. Or if they're earning impermissible uh, money through their job or through their occupation, then we do tell them what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. What does he say? He says, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَ وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُ And whoever has that taqwa of Allah, and you're speaking to a Muslim here, so who understands what taqwa is. And taqwa is, people translate it as fear of Allah, but it's more an awareness of Allah, being conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every single time before they make a decision. Well, that itself is something which they are happy to uh, 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 experience. They are willing to make that sacrifice, that they're willing to, to uh, change their life and be aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times before they make a decision, before they, they move forward. They want to uh, keep Allah 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy. And so they're aware of him. They're thinking of what, whether Allah will be happy with this or not. So they are, they're willing to actually change their lives to that level that every act that they do is going to be governed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's taqwa. So Allah says that whoever has taqwa of Allah, meaning that they are aware of Allah and they know that, oh, you know, I'm doing a profession here which is not permissible and so I'm going to leave it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching me. I have taqwa, I'm aware of him. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will find him a way out. And he will give him rizq, uh, provision, blessed provision from those kind of avenues that he had absolutely no idea about. Uh, that he had no, he had never imagined that uh, there's going to be a career change, that I'm going to train in something else, that there's going to be a contract that's going to come through, that there's going to be this sum of money, whatever. It's going to come. And and whoever places their trust solely in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَهُوَ حَسْبُ He will be sufficient for that person alone. He will be absolutely sufficient. Whoever trusts in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will be sufficient. Now that kind of talk, is difficult for a, a non-Muslim who's about to take Islam or a brand new Muslim. It's difficult for them to maybe have that trust immediately. That is why, that is why, um, if they have already started to develop their Iman, then we want to try and encourage them into this. And we want to try and explain to them that whoever leaves something, this is principle in the Sharia, that whoever leaves something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will always replace it with that which is better. And better here does not always necessarily mean that they get a better paid job or they get a better higher position in somewhere else. Because me and you, we don't know what is best for us. When we trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are basically saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what is better for us in the dunya and in the akhirah. Not just yani, uh, in the akhirah. Sometimes now we are going to take a particular profession, but it was going to threaten us. It would lead to us becoming lax- you know, uh, lazy, lackadaisical in a certain aspect of the da'wah or in our ibadah or in our salah or lead us to miss Jum'ah or something. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts it away from us, keeps us away from it. And we have to trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is operating uh, uh, for our benefit. Whatever he does is for, for our benefit. You just have to have the iman and the tawakkul for that. And that, as I said, is sometimes difficult for the new Muslim to, to, to grab and to garner. Tattooing, if just to follow that example, is something which is impermissible by consensus of the scholars. It's a permanent change of your skin color. The process of tattooing, we're not talking about the ones that we used to do as kids, which is to get the chewing gum and take out the packet and, you know, just rub it on the skin. That's something which you can wash off. We're not talking about temporary little kind of things. And of course, kohul and henna, which the uh, women use to do their eyes and the, uh, you know, that... Uh, uh, that's uh, that's an orange kind of uh, I'm not trying to denigrate it But I've got no time for henna As you can imagine I don't care for it I don't I don't find it attractive But obviously some women do So alhamdulillah Good luck to them They uh, put their uh, uh, Stain their skin But this is a temporary staining of the skin Tattooing is something very very different It actually involves an injection And it's not, not really about the pain or not The fact that you are at, uh, at Attacking your own self You see some of the scholars they said that tattooing is haram because it is almost like self-mutilation. It's like self-harm. Well, actually, the injection is not so painful uh, all the time, and it can be anesthetized as well. And you're injecting dye into the actual skin and changing its color. It's a permanent change. And that's something which is called taghir khalqillah. It is changing the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made prohibited. And we have the narration in Bukhari where uh, Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anh, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has cursed al-washimat wal mustawshimat, those people who do tattooing and those who receive tattooing as well. So the text is actually very, very clear. Um, it is not something which is permissible to continue in. So that's the actual ruling if a person is ready to accept that ruling on, you believe that their iman can handle it. But if they can't, because of their newness to the religion, then we're not going to put this right on them at the beginning of their Islam. We'll say, listen, just, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to say that this, this, this profession is, is the best. We're not going to tell you that, you know, this is something which Islam supports. It's clear that those who are Muslims don't do this kind of thing and uh, tattoo their body. We believe in the, the sanctity of the human body. It's a responsibility which has been given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It comes with conditions. We're not allowed to change it in the way that Allah has created upon, upon its asal, upon its yani, base state. That's something which is not out of respect for Allah. It's not out of respect to our human bodies. You can try softly to... To, to, to just introduce some of the ideas to get them thinking that do I want to be involved in a in a uh, an occupation that does this kind of uh, uh, that, that that does this kind of thing to the human body, but if a person is 
is making it that you know it's Islam or not, whatever. This is a emotional statement. No person, if they really believed in Allah, if they recognize that I don't believe in anything now, and this is the truth, and the truth itself is going to save me forever. It's going to give me happiness in this life, and it's going to give me salvation forever. That I'm going to really sacrifice that for the sake of one job or my tattooing profession. If anyone who understood their Tawheed or the reason they're becoming Muslim properly, if they really understood it, they would never ever consider to continue in something which is impermissible. But because they are in an emotional state, they have not really reached that absolute certainty in, in Islam. They haven't really felt that intellectual conviction yet that of the, uh, of the certainty of this deen. That is why they are even putting this question to you. Because frankly, it's an absurd question. How can anyone put a profession forward over the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can anyone put profession, if you are looking at the fire and someone said, and you're about to fall into the fire and someone said, listen, you're about to fall, but you have to just, you know, the way you can save yourself is just to leave this or to leave that. Well, you just leave it because, you know, you drop it just like that because, you know, you don't want to actually fall into no fire. But well, it's, 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 it doesn't, it's not rocket science. And so at that moment in time, you are not dealing with a person who is fully, fully in control of what they're saying, what they're believing. And so we're also going to play with this person to their sense and to their ability and to their level. And at that moment in time, we'll say, listen, just leave the tattoo issue to the side. Let's focus on what's really, really important. Let's focus on priorities. And that is, you know, for us to achieve that absolute, you know, uh, peace and stability with respect to who we are and what we're doing here and what it's all about. In this life and of course in the afterlife which you have no doubt about and in the meeting of the creator which you have no doubt about let's focus upon that so you shift the conversation to this area get them to certainty on this and then slowly we will allow and allow this to develop then inshallah where we start talking about occupations and about building trust in Allah and about changing professions to that which is permissible and this would apply to many of the impermissible professions we don't have to completely cut it dead there and then immediately. A person who's been doing that all the time and dependent upon that wealth, the ulama have mentioned in many, many of their fatawa, and we will talk about this in another session as well, that in the kind of crossover period when they are dependent, when they have no other place to go, and especially in a country where they're a non-Muslim country and there's not enough funds and the Muslims are not looking after these people and giving them the financial security that they should be, then we cannot uh, uh, be surprised if that's the only source of income that they have for a period of time. We'll let it slide. We'll never accept it. We'll never endorse that job or occupation or source of income, but we'll let it slide in that original period and we will work on them in a slow and in a meaningful way, inshallah, to get a positive change. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh, 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 oh,